It's Christmas Eve 2020. I can think of no better time to discuss one of my favorite Christmas stories, the Charles Dickens classic, A Christmas Carol. Anyone familiar with this story knows the main characters and themes. Ebenezer Scrooge is a miserly businessman, Bob Cratchit his long-suffering clerk. They represent the dual aspects of the Victorian London merchant class. There are some misconceptions which have to be clarified, though, in order to better understand the story. Scrooge is a financier. While some versions of the story show him as a representative of a different kind of merchant, What Scrooge actually does is to lend money to others in the business community, taking repayment at a respectable but reasonable interest rate. He's not doing anything illegal at all, where his covetous nature asserts itself is in his unrelenting enforcement of the terms of every loan. Scrooge is never lenient with debtors who fall behind, foreclosing loans and seizing collateral immediately. This is why, during the visit of the ghost of Christmas yet to come, we see a couple rejoicing at his death because Scrooge's passing gave them more time to repay the loan without losing their collateral, which in this instance is assumed to be either their home or their business. Scrooge is also extremely thrifty. Again, this is often depicted as a refusal to pay for anything, but the story provides a clue that this is not so. Before Scrooge returns to his home for the night, he dines at his club. We know this because he claims that Jacob Marley's appearance is about of indigestion from this dinner. Now, dining out always costs more than eating at home, so we know that he's willing to spend money on himself. When it comes to his employees, though, he never pays more than the wage to which they originally agreed. For that matter, let's look at what we know of such arrangements. Cratchit's salary. Scrooge pays him 15 shillings a week, or, on an annual basis, 39 pounds sterling. That's approximately the starting salary paid for a clerk at that period which would be a fair wage for any clerk in Cratchit's position, at least when first hired. What happened, though, is that Cratchit worked for Scrooge and Marley for years without receiving a raise in pay or a promotion. His employer never considered promoting him or raising his salary because that was not part of their arrangement. Neither Scrooge nor Marley intended to take on another partner when Cratchit was hired. Cratchit, meanwhile, had a large family with his wife. The Cratchits lived less well than Scrooge, but Cratchit himself was grateful for his job. The post-Napoleonic Depression had crushed Great Britain in 1812, bringing nearly a decade of economic depression just before Cratchit would have been seeking employment at Scrooge and Marley. He was hired at a decent rate of pay for the time, and that explains Cratchit's loyalty to Scrooge despite the lack of raises and promotions. Besides that, it was still a middle-class salary even in 1843, the year in which the story was set. Scrooge quite simply, wasn't necessarily an evil man. He had grown up unloved and likely lived in some poverty, given his age, though. The crisis of 1772 had crushed trade and credit in Great Britain, about the time that Scrooge would have been a boy. Given his education at a boarding school and his apprenticeship at Fezziwigs, it's likely that Scrooge was also the son of a merchant, and therefore affected by this crisis through its impact on his family. It's also likely that Scrooge's father, who was distant according to the story, was pushing Scrooge into a career as fast as possible for Scrooge's benefit. Put all of those things together, and Scrooge's obsession with financial success can be explained, as is his reluctance to marry before he was financially successful. Scrooge delayed his wedding until his fiancée broke off their engagement, a situation which was regrettable if understandable from both perspectives. While his fiancée was certainly ready to be married, he simply wasn't, especially as a financier who could easily see the credit bubble which created the post-Napoleonic Depression forming. Instead, he secured his business, likely exploiting the opportunities of the Depression to make his fortune. Like I said, not necessarily evil, just misguided and obsessed with financial success until the purpose for that success, a marriage and family, were forgotten. The visits of the spirits reminded Scrooge of all that he had given up for the sake of his business. That was the point of the story, and how did he respond? He renewed his relationship with his nephew, gave the Cratchit family a real luxury in the form of a prized turkey, a rarity in Victorian England, for their Christmas dinner. 
made a huge donation to charity, and even paid a passing boy what he normally paid Cratchit for a full day's work for running a five-minute errand. He surprised Cratchit with a raise in salary despite Bob showing up late for work and expecting to be fired. It was so surprising, in fact, that poor Bob doubted Scrooge's sanity. And in fact, Scrooge made plans with Cratchit to discuss Cratchit's affairs, which a contemporary reader would interpret as his future with the firm. Cratchit's loyalty was repaid, and then some, as Scrooge even ensured that Tiny Tim was restored to full health. In that light, Scrooge's redemption can be seen as a story of hope for us today. We can read his story and see echoes of the same circumstances in today's world. Maybe some of us are Scrooge, having forgotten how to participate in life while still obtaining our financial success. Maybe some of us are Cratchit, trying to survive tough times and still make ends meet. And maybe some of us are Fred, wanting to do more than we can to help those who are struggling and trying to convince those who could easily help to do something, anything more to help others. 2020 has been tough enough for all of us, folks. Be good to each other. May the holidays bring you some happiness, and 2021 be a better year for all of us. Merry Christmas. May God bless us all, everyone.